Okay, good, good evening, students. Good, good evening, madam. Okay, let us uh, continue with our uh, revision class. So, the, uh, yesterday we just uh, took uh, Epsilon NFA. And uh, today we are going to see NFA to DFA conversion. Okay, last week we conducted the pre um, basics. That is, which are the basic elements to consider in uh, um, automata and how to construct a DFA and NFA. That's what we have seen. Now uh, we are going to see how to convert the NFA into DFA. Okay, this is also an important question. So uh, consider this uh, NFA. It has three states, Q0, Q1, Q2, and it is NFA uh, because from Q0 we can see that uh, uh, there are uh, two transitions for zero. Here one transition, a transition. Uh, for Q0, uh, on zero there is one transition that is a self loop and there is another transition to Q1. So there are two transitions for one symbol. So it is an NFA. <laughs> now uh, we have to do the conversion. And in the step one is to uh, write the transition table of NFA. So for we have to first write the transition table for the given NFA. We are going to convert this NFA into a DFA. Okay. So first we are going to write the transition table of this given NFA. And that uh, uh, we draw the table like this. We have two input symbols 0 and 1. And the states are marked Q0, Q1, Q2. And Q0 is the initial state. So we put the arrow here. Q0. <coughs> and in Q2, Q2 is the final state. And uh, that we put it as star. <coughs> okay, now... Um, the uh, transitions for Q0 on 0, there are two transitions. One is uh, in the self loop. So that means on Q0, it may remain in Q0 itself or it will transit to Q1. So Q0, Q1 is marked here for the transition. Then uh, Q0 on 1, when Q0 on 1, there is only one transition that is the self loop. So it remains in Q0 when input is 1. Then similarly for Q1, what will be uh, the transition for 0? For in Q1, there is no transition for 0 is defined. So it is null. We mark it as empty set. Then Q1 on 1, it will transit to Q2. So Q2 is marked here. The next state will be Q2. And for Q2, both uh, for 0 and 1, it is a self loop. That means the next uh, state will be Q2 itself. Okay. So that is the first step, draw the transition tables. Then the step two is write the transition table for the DFA. So from this uh, NFA, from the transition table of NFA, we can directly uh, write the corresponding DFA's uh, transition table. Okay, so here we are going to do the conversion from NFA uh, to DFA. So first we write the transition table for NFA. And from this, we are directly going to write the transition table for our uh, DFA. Okay. So you should be very careful in this step. So first we draw the uh, table and uh, we mark the columns. That is for each uh, input symbol, we put the columns 0 and 1 are the inputs. Then start with the initial state. Q0 is our initial state. So we start with it and check the transitions for Q0 on 0 and on 1. 
okay from the uh, transition table of nfa we can see the uh, transitions so for q0 on 0 there are two possible transitions one is the transition to q0 itself or the transition to q1 and as we know in dfa we cannot have two transitions for same symbol the two transitions are not allowed in dfa so what we are going to do is we are going to construct another state a new state that uh, is a combination of q0 and the q1 so we will write the transition as q01 q01 is a new state that is a combination of q0 and q1 so it means that when the machine is in q0 for the dfa if the input comes uh, is zero it will take a transition to a new state called the q01 okay q01 means q0 q1 combination we combine the two states into single one and we get a, a new state and uh, for q01 for q0 on 1 it will be the transition will be q0 itself it is a self loop so that is marked here okay so the transitions for q0 is complete now we check which are the new states coming up here okay q0 is already defined then q01 is a new state okay when we find the transition for q0 we find a new state called q01 so next step in the next step we have to define the transitions for q01 so let me put a q01 over here and now we have to find the transitions for 0 and 1 for this new state okay to find the transitions for uh, this new state uh, what we do is <coughs> So we are going to find out the transitions for Q0 uh, and uh, Q, Q01. Okay, this is our state Q01. So for this, to find out the transitions on 0, what we have to find the transitions of Q0 and Q1 on 0. That means we have to find out the transitions for Q0 and uh, Q1 on uh, 0. So you have to take these two. Okay, these two will be the uh, transitions for Q0 and Q1 on 0. So there are two sets. One set is Q0, Q1 and the other one is null set. So you take the union, we will get a Q0, Q1 again. So Q0, Q1, two states, we combine it into single and we write it as Q0, 1. Okay, and similarly, we have to find the transition for 1. Again, we have to find the transition of Q0 and Q1 for 1. Okay, that is this one. We have to take these two. That is, this is transition for Q0 on 1. This is transition for Q1 on 1. Okay, then you take the union. Q0 union, Q, Q2 is Q0, Q2. So that Q0, Q2 we combine to Q0, 2. We combine and make it as a new state. Eh? That is Q0, Okay, so we have defined the transitions for Q01 now. Okay, now again you check whether there is any transitions not defined. Q01 is defined, Q0 is uh, defined in the first uh, step itself. Then Q01 again that is defined, then the new state is Q02. So in the next step we are going to define this Q02. Okay, Q02 means now we are going to define the transitions for Q02. Okay, so for Q02 means you have to find the transition for Q0 and Q2. Okay, on 0, Q0. Q0, 0 is this one and Q0, 2, uh, sorry, Q2, 
zero is this. Okay. So transition for Q zero is this, and for transition for Q two is this on zero. So it is Q zero, Q one, Q two. The union when we take the union, it is Q zero, Q one. Q two, so we write it as Q zero one two. We create a new state like this. So the transition is written here Q zero one two. Then uh, for the transition one, we take uh, this one Q zero and uh, Q two here. Okay, transitions for Q zero and Q two. It is again Q zero Q two. It will be written like Q zero two. Okay, that is written here. So the transitions for Q zero two is over. Now we check whether any state is not defined. So this state is not defined. The transitions are not defined. So next step we will define the transition for Q zero one two. Q zero one two means the transitions for Q zero, Q one, and Q two. Take the union of all those states. Okay, so we are going to find out the transitions for Q zero one two, Q zero, Q one, Q two. All the three states, the transitions for all the three states we have to take. Q zero, Q one, union, null set, union, Q two. So it is again become Q zero, Q one, Q two. The union will be this one. So we write it as Q zero one two. Okay, so the transition for this one is Q zero one two, and for one again we have to take the union of all these, and it will be union will be Q zero Q two, and we write it as Q zero two. Okay, that is the new states. So now you check uh, whether all the states are uh, defined or not. Q zero one is defined, Q zero is defined, Q zero one is defined. Q zero two is defined. Q zero one two defined. Q zero two defined. Q zero one two defined. Q zero two defined. So all states, uh, the transitions for all new states and existing states. Uh, you can see that the state Q one Q two we are not defining here because in our DFA the states Q one and Q two not coming. Instead, the combinations of Q one Q two and Q zero are coming in the DFA. Okay, <coughs> so we got the transition table of our DFA. So this is the DFA transition table for DFA. So we got the transition table for the DFA. From this, we uh, we are able to draw the um, transition diagram. Okay, so let us uh, draw like this. So we start from Q zero. Uh, in DFA also, the state, uh, initial state is Q0. Then uh, we take a transition uh, on 0. It will transit to Q0 1. So uh, it will take uh, this transition to Q0 1 on 0. So this one we marked. Okay. Then uh, let me change the color. Okay. Then uh, the next transitions for Q1, okay? So uh, on on one, on one it will remain in Q0 itself, okay? On one it will remain in Q0 itself. So that it is drawn like this. So the transitions for Q0 over. Then the transitions for Q01. Uh, for Q01 on zero it remain in uh, same state, Q01 itself. Then on one it will transit to Q zero two. So we will write a Q zero two. So it will transit to Q zero two. Then uh, that is over. Q zero one is also over. Now we go to Q zero two. Q zero two we can see on zero it will uh, transit to a new state called Q zero one two. Okay, so on new uh, on zero, it will transit to a new state, and on one, it remains in Q zero two itself. So it will remain in the state. So this is also over. Then Q zero one two. 
for q012 on c row it remains in q012 itself okay on zero it remains there and on uh, uh, one it will transit back to q02 and one more thing here we have to find out is uh, the initial state is q0 and how do we know which is the final state okay in our given nfa given nfa the final state is q2 final state is q2 so wherever we get a combination of q2 here all those are final states so here we have a q0 q2 this q0 q2 includes uh, the state q0 and q2 okay so in that q2 is a final state so this q02 the new state q02 will also act as a final state and uh, here also we have a combination of q2 so wherever we find a combination or the state q2 itself we we take those states are final state so since 2 is here and 2 is here these two are final states so we mark it as these two states as final states okay so these are the two final states we marked and the machine also i do so the machine i have drawn like this that we have already drawn so this is how we convert a nfa to dfa okay so uh, this is uh, the first step only two steps we have in the first step we write the transition table first we write the transition table of the nfa and uh, looking at the transition diagram we can write the transition tables and from this transition table we are going to write the transition table of the uh, required dfa and always start with the initial state and find the transitions for initial state from the nfa table okay from this if there is a combination of states you combine those two states and you get a new state so since here is q0 and q1 we combine it into single state like q01 okay we name it as q01 to show that it is a combination of q0 and q1 and whenever we get a new state that uh, the transitions for those states should be defined okay so here i got q01 and in the next step i am going to define the transitions for q01 and whenever you get a new states so all those states has to be uh, defined transition should be defined and once the transition table is complete uh, we go for the transition diagram transition diagram for the dfa so from the transition table we can draw the transition diagram okay let us go for another example uh, this is the simple example an nfa uh, q0 is the initial state and q1 is the final state only one uh, only two states it has and the symbols are a and b so first we are going to write the transition table of this nfa uh, the transition table is like this okay for q0 for q0 on a there is no transition from q0 so it is null set and on b it will transit to q1 so it is marked here then for q1 both a and b it remain in q1 itself so uh, the transitions are marked q1 q1 now we are going to write the transition table for its corresponding dfa so we start with the q0 Uh, the symbols are a and b and we start with the q0 and for q0 on a from this nfa table we can see that there is no transitions defined for q0 and we know that in dfa the we cannot leave any transitions blank there should be one transition for every input so i cannot put a null set here in the transition table of dfa so what we do is we introduce a new new state called the um, trap state okay if we find any transitions blank in our dfa we here the, there is a blank uh, transition 
okay so instead of this blank one we will introduce a new state called a trap state i put it as qt to to show to show that it is a trap state that is also a new state that we are introducing in the dfa okay which is not available in nfa but we are introducing it into our dfa then q0 on b it is q1 so that we can directly write here Okay, now we got two new new states here. One is Q T and one is Q one. So next we are going to define the Q T. Q T means it's a trap state. Trap state means once we enter the state, we have to remain in that state itself. That means after entering the state, you, you, whatever input comes, we have to be in the same state. So for a both a and b, it will remain in Q T itself. Okay. So the, you can see that this is a, for A it remain in QT and for B also it remain in QT because it is trap state. If you please mute. Okay. Then the next state is Q1. Okay. We take a Q1 uh, and the transitions are uh, we can directly write it. It's a single state, so we, the transitions we can directly take from the NFA. So Q1. On A, it is Q1 itself, and on B also, it is Q1 itself. Okay, so you check the table. We defined the QT and Q1. We defined again QT defined, QT defined, Q1 defined, and Q1 defined. So all states are defined. It is complete. And which is the final state? Why final state in NFA is Q1, and wherever we find the combinations of Q1, those are the final states. So here we have only one single Q1. There is no combinations of one is available. So Q1 is our final state in the uh, DFA. So now we are going to write the transitions for uh, um, DFA. So start with the Q0. Uh, on A, it will move to uh, the uh, state QT. Okay, on A, it will move to the state QT. Then on B, it will move to the state Q1. Okay, which is a final state. Then for QT, both the A and B, it will uh, take the self loop because it will remain in QT itself for both A and B. And the transitions for Q1, both the A and B, it will remain in Q1 itself. Okay, so the transition table, uh, transition diagram is over. So this is the, the this is the DFA corresponding to this NFA. Okay, so here we have an NFA with the two states, and when we convert it into the DFA, we got it in three states. Okay, the three, the third state was mandatory here to implement it as a DFA. So hope you understood uh, this example, the conversion. There is only two steps. One is the write the transition table of NFA. Then from that uh, step by step, you construct the transition table of the DFA. Then from the transition table, draw the tran uh, transition diagram. That is all. So the, the, this is the uh, DFA corresponding to our given this is the dfa okay this is the, uh, the given nfa okay from this nfa we converted it into the dfa using these two steps okay so that is all uh, for nfa to dfa conversion okay uh, any doubt in this Hope you understood that. If you get any doubt in between, you ask. Then the next topic, uh, I think I should take uh, that. <clears throat> Uh, epsilon NFA I have taken yesterday, but uh, I have taken it from the uh, mobile phone, so I am not satisfied with that class.
So next we are going to see epsilon NFA. I'll just take it once again, epsilon NFA and its conversions. Okay, hope you can see the presentation. Uh, epsilon NFA. So we have seen uh, how to construct a DFA, how to con construct an NFA, and how to convert an NFA into DFA, the conversion from NFA into DFA. Now another variation of NFA is epsilon NFA. Epsilon NFA is nothing but where we have epsilon transitions. Okay, NFA that contains epsilon transitions. Epsilon transition is nothing but it allows a transition from one state to the another without consuming any input. Okay, without uh, taking any input symbol, we can take a transition from one state to the other. Uh, when we check any, uh, any of our NFA or DFA, always the transitions takes place on some input. Okay, when some input symbol comes, then only it takes the transition. Okay, but epsilon transition means without input, we can take a transition. And uh, in, uh, in, in DFA, we cannot have an epsilon transition. Only in NFA, we can have the epsilon transition. Okay, NFA uh, uh, supports uh, epsilon transition and in DFA, it, DFA does not support the uh, epsilon transition. Then for exa example, we can see this one, Q0, Q1, Q2, three states are there. And you can see there are two epsilon transitions, one, um, uh, one from uh, Q0 to Q1, one transition is there, epsilon transition, and Q1 to Q2, there is an epsilon transition. Okay, so this means that to transit from Q0 to Q1, we don't want any input. Okay, without input, I can transit from Q0 to Q1. And similarly, to transit from Q1 to Q2, to make the changes state change from Q1 to Q2, I don't want any input. Without input, I can take the transition. So it means that from Q0, without any input, I can uh, get into the final state Q2. That means I take this epsilon transition to move to Q1, and from there I take another epsilon transition to move to Q2. Okay, that is, uh, uh, this machine will accept epsilon as an input. Okay, without, uh, without input, I can move to the uh, final state. And if suppose the input is zero, input is zero from Q0, it uh, takes the self loop. And after this, after the zero, it will simply take two epsilon transition to reach the final state. That means if the input is zero, still uh, the machine is able to reach the final state and the zero will be accepted. Okay. Then if the input is one, what happens? It will from Q0, it will take an epsilon transition, then consume the input one using this transition, then take an epsilon transition to reach Q2. So that means if the input is one, the machine is able to re reach the final state. Okay, after consuming the one, before and after consuming one, it will take this epsilon transition and it will reach the final state. So since it is able to reach the final state on input one, the input one will also be accepted. And two, if the input is two, so before consuming two, it will take the two epsilon transitions and it will simply reach Q2. 
the final state, then it consumes two. So it will remain in Q2 itself. So the input symbol is two, still the machine will accept the input two. Okay, because uh, when we read two, when the machine reads two, it is in final state. After reading two also, it will remain in final state. So it is accepted. And if suppose the input is 0, 1, 2, what happens? 0, 1, 2, if the input symbol is 0, 1, 2. Uh, again, it, uh, we can check this example. If the input is 0, 1, 2, how the machine works? So it starts in, uh, for in the initial state Q0. And on input 0, in, in the string 0, 1, 2, the first symbol is 0. So when it takes 0, it will uh, take the self loop. Okay, it will take the self loop zero and it will remain in Q0 itself. Okay, and the next symbol is one. And to consume this one, it will take this epsilon transition and will move to the state Q1. Okay, from Q1 only we can consume one. Okay, Q0 can consume only zero and Q1 can consume only one and Q2 can consume only two. Okay. So to consume one, we'll take this epsilon transition and we'll move to Q1. So the next input symbol is, we consumed zero, the next input symbol is one. So the machine is in Q1 and the input symbol is one. So the machine will take this self-loop transition. Then it gets in the same state itself, in Q1 itself. It is a self-loop, it will remain in Q1. And to consume the next symbol, two, it has to move to Q2. So for that, it will take the epsilon transition. That is epsilon transition from Q1 to Q2. So the transition will be like this. And the machine is now in Q2. Now it can consume two, the symbol two. And after consuming the symbol two, it is uh, remaining in the final state itself. So the string is accepted. So after consuming zero, one, two, all the characters in the string, the machine is in Q2. So it is accepted. So that is how the epsilon transitions work. And the next uh, top uh, concept we need to learn is epsilon closure. So if we have epsilon transitions in a machine, we can write the epsilon closures. And the representation is epsilon star. This is the representation of epsilon closure. And what is epsilon closure means? Uh, epsilon closure of any state means the states that are reachable through the epsilon transitions, okay? That means we consider only epsilon transition. So from one state, uh, if I take epsilon transitions, which are the states I can reach? That is the epsilon closure means. For example, take the same, same state. So here epsilon closure of Q0 means the states that are reachable from Q0 using epsilon transition. So from Q0, there is one epsilon transition. I can reach Q1. So Q1 is one of the epsilon closures of Q0. Okay. Then from Q1, again, I take one more epsilon transition. I can reach Q2. So that means that from Q0, I can reach both Q1 and Q2 using epsilon transitions. And uh, if I if I'm not consuming anything, I can remain in Q0 itself too. So the epsilon closure of Q0 can includes the same state. Epsilon closure of Q0 is written like this: epsilon star of Q0. It contains Q0 itself. That means if I am not consuming anything, I can remain in the same state. So Q0 is already there. Then which are the other states I can reach through epsilon transitions? So from Q0, if I take an epsilon transition, I can reach Q1. Then from there, I take one more epsilon, I can reach Q2. So that means from Q0, I can reach both Q1 and Q2. Okay, only through epsilon transitions. Then the next uh, epsilon transition of Q1, we can write epsilon transition of Q1. So Q1 itself is there. Plus, from Q1, I can take the epsilon transition to reach Q2. So, Q2 is also reachable from Q1. So, Q1, Q2 is the epsilon transitions of the epsilon closures of Q1. Then, Q2, 
uh, uh, you can see from the machine there is no transitions from Q2, no epsilon transitions from Q2. But uh, epsilon closure of any state includes the same state itself. It means that if we are in, if the machine is in a particular state and if we are not consuming anything, the machine will remain in the same state. And that is why the same states are included here. So this is the epsilon closure. Epsilon closure of any state means the states that are reachable from the state only using epsilon transitions. So epsilon closure of Q0 means which are the states reachable from Q0 using epsilon transitions. So here we take epsilon transition to reach Q1 and another epsilon transition to reach Q2. So Q1, Q2 are reachable from Q0. That is the meaning of this statement, epsilon closure of Q0. Now we are going to convert this epsilon NFA into NFA. Epsilon NFA into NFA. That means we are going to remove the epsilon transitions. Okay, the first step is to write the epsilon closure of all states in the given NFA. Okay, in the epsilon NFA, we write all the epsilon closures. Then write the transition table of our epsilon NFA. Then write the transitions for NFA. That is, we want to convert this epsilon NFA into NFA. So in the third step, we are going to directly write the transitions for the NFA. Then draw the NFA. These are the four steps we have to follow. So let us uh, consider the same example. Uh, for this machine, we know the epsilon closures. First, write the epsilon closure of Q0. It is Q0, Q1, Q2. Then epsilon closure of Q1. It is Q1, Q2. Then epsilon closure of Q2. Then draw the transition table of this machine. Okay, the, uh, the state, uh, the, we have three states, Q0, Q1, Q2, and the input symbols are 0, 1, and 2. And now we are going to fill it uh, on Q0. Uh, uh, Q0 on 0, it will remain in Q0. And for Q1 on 1, it remain in Q1 itself. On Q2, it remains in Q2 itself. These are the three transitions we have. And the epsilon transition also we have to write. Um, but I haven't mentioned it here. Okay. Mm, because that one we are go not going to use uh, in this conversion. That is why. Uh, if not, uh, what we have to do is we, uh, we have to write it like this. Okay, here, here we have to add this epsilon symbol at the end, 0, 1, 2, and the epsilon also. Epsilon on Q0, it will transit to Q1. Okay, then Q1 on epsilon transition, it will transit to Q2. And there is no transition from Q2. So this is how we complete. If you want to complete the transition diagram of epsilon NFA, we have to write like this. Okay, but uh, we are not going to use it here. That is why I haven't uh, included. Okay, we have some space constraints as well. So I am removing it. Okay, so these are the possible transitions we have. Okay, then all uh, there is no more transitions. So for all that will be null set or uh, um, phi, we put it as uh, some dash. Okay. So the transitions for Q0 on 1, there is no transition. Q0 on 1, there is no transition or 2, no transition. So like that. So we have drawn the transition table of the NFA. Now we are going to write the transitions for NFA. So for writing the transitions for NFA, we have to make a table like this. So first we are going to find out uh, the transitions for uh, Q0, transitions for uh, Q0 on 0. This is the transition we are going to write. Q0 on 0, what will be the transition? That is what we are going to find out in this table. Okay, only this particular, what will be this one? This is for, this, this is actually epsilon NFA and we are going to find out uh, the <coughs> Anybody is trying to join? Okay. 
Okay, so Q0, uh, 0, we are going to find out for our NFA. Okay, we are going to convert it to NFA. So the targeted NFA, what will be the transition for Q0 on 0? That is what we are going to find here. So in this table, this is a particular, it's a particular type of uh, table where we have three columns. First is epsilon closure, then our input symbol, then again epsilon closure. So in the first column, this, uh, this column, what we have to write is, we have to write the epsilon closure of this state. Which state we have mentioned here? The epsilon closure of that state has to be written in the first column. So here the first state is Q0. And we are going to fire, write the epsilon closures of Q0 on the first column. So epsilon closure of Q0 includes these three states, Q0, Q1, and Q2. So we are in the first column, we are going to write those three, Q0, Q1, Q2, we are writing. And in the next step, what we do is, uh, in the next step, we have to, so we, we filled the first column. We filled the first column. Now we are going to fill this second column. Second column says that what will be the transitions on zero for these uh, three states. For these three states, what will be the uh, transitions? Okay, these three states. Q0, 0, zero. what is the transition? Q0, zero, 0, the transition is this. So it will be Q0. Then Q10, Q10 is null and Q20 is also null. So we will put the, the nulls here. Okay. You can either put the phi over here or you can write like a null set like that. Okay. What are, or for saving the space, I simply put the dash symbol. That means that it means that there is no transition for uh, zero on Q1 and for Q2 also there is no transition. That is why. Okay. Now we are going to write the transitions for the uh, next uh, one. Uh, now we have to fill this column. Epsilon closure of what are states here in the in, uh, previous column that we have to write. Here only one state we have here that is Q0. So uh, we write uh, the epsilon closures of Q0. And what is epsilon closure of Q0? This one. Q0, Q1, Q2 are the epsilon closures of Q1, Q0. So we will write it here in this column. Q0, Q1, Q2. And there is no epsilon closures for these two. So we will leave it. Okay, this is actually, this is actually for uh, this Q0. It is the epsilon closure of this Q0. Okay. So it means that this, what this, this table is complete now. So what it means that on Q0, on Q0, if the input is 0, what will be the next states in our targeted NFA? This is the states on Q0, 0. These are the next states. These are the next states. So when we write the transition table of this NFA, we have to write it like this. On Q0, 0, the next states could be Q0, Q1, and Q2. This is the meaning of this table. Understood? We have to take this final uh, states uh, in the states in the final column. So this is the corresponding transitions for this. Transition for 0 on Q0. These are the next states. This is the meaning. Then similarly, we have to find the transitions for 1 and transitions for 2. Okay. So for that, what we have to do, we have to find the, uh, uh, we have to draw another table like this. Similarly, instead of this 0, uh, instead of this zero, we have to put uh, the next symbol. So instead of that zero, we put one and everything else is same. So first column is epsilon closure that we have already filled here. It is epsilon closure of Q0. Okay, epsilon closure of Q0 we have filled here in this uh, column. Then uh, we have to find out the uh, transitions for 1 on Q0, 
transitions of 1 on Q1 and Q2. So that means we have to get uh, this one. Q0, Q1, Q2, this transitions on 1. So that we will fill here uh, that uh, uh, null set is Q1 and null. Okay. So it is filled. Now we have to find the epsilon closure of this Q1. Epsilon closure of this Q1. Um, we cannot find the epsilon closure for this null and this null. So we leave these two. We take the epsilon closure of Q1. And what is epsilon closure of Q1? Epsilon closure of Q1 is Q1, Q2. So what we do is we write the epsilon closure of Q1 as Q1, Q2. So it means that uh, if the state is Q0 and if the input is 1, the next states can be these two. So the transition will be Q1, Q2. That is the meaning. Okay. So we always take uh, the uh, states that we get in the uh, uh, last epsilon closure state. Okay. So this one we have marked on Q0, 0 and on Q0, 1, these are the next states and we have to find the transition for 2. So for Q0, for Q0 on 2, what will be the transitions? Okay. Epsilon closures, we have written the same epsilon closure of Q0, uh, Q0, Q1, Q2. Now we have to find the transitions of these three states on 2. Okay, on 2, we can see from this table, it is first two are null sets, then the last Q2 that we have marked here. Now, we have to find the epsilon closure of this Q2. Okay, whichever states there in this column, we have to find the epsilon closures. And the epsilon closure of this null set is null only, and the epsilon closure of this null is null. Then epsilon closure of Q2 is Q2. So it means that it uh, means that um, on Q0, uh, if the input symbol is 2, the next state will be Q2. So that means here we will get Q2. So that is uh, that is the way we drive, we find the transitions for our NFA. So if I draw the uh, NFA, uh, the um, transitions for this, it will be like this from Q0. From Q0 on 0, it may remain in Q0 itself or it can move to Q1 or it can move to Q2. Okay, that is the meaning of this. From Q0 on 0, it can move to Q0 itself or Q1 or Q2. So, three transitions. And on 1, uh, it will uh, move to Q1 or Q2. And on 1, it can move to Q1 or Q2. Then on 2, it will move to Q2. Okay, that is the meaning. So, from Q0, these many transitions are possible. So only Q0 is over. Now we have to do the transitions for Q1 and Q2. Both the same way we have to do. So for Q1, first column, we write the epsilon closure of Q1. Epsilon closure of Q1 is nothing but uh, it is uh, Q1, Q2. So we will fill Q1, Q2. And now find the transitions for Q1 and Q2 on 0. Q1 and Q2 on 0. Q1 and Q2 um, uh, on 0, what is the transition? It is all null. Okay. So, uh, if we take the epsilon closure of the null, it will be null again. It is over. That means that on Q1, it is null set only. There is no transitions for from Q1 on 0. Then we take uh, uh, for the input 1. Okay. So Q1, Q2, the epsilon closures of Q1 are Q1, Q2, that is there. 
then find the transitions for q1 and q2 on one q1 and q2 on one the transitions are this q1 and an l second and next we find the epsilon closure of q1 epsilon closure of q1 epsilon closure of q1 is q1 q2 so we will write it here so this is q1 q2 we have written so it means that on one it will be q1 q2 the transitions okay so that means on one it will remain in q1 or it will transit to q2 that is the transit then uh, q2 um, uh, uh, sorry for input 2 we have to do the same thing and here also we got uh, q2 that means uh, from q1 on 2 it will transit to q2 this is q okay and the same way we have to complete q2 also and finally we'll get the transitions like this q0 q1 q2 q1 q2 q2 like this okay this is this is the transition table for our nfa and now we have to draw the machine complete the machine What happened? Okay, so this uh, machine we can just uh, complete in the previous slide. We could not complete it because of space. So we first to draw this one initially from Q0. From Q0 on 0, it can take these three transitions. Either it can remain in Q0 or it can transit to Q1. Okay or it can transit to Q2. That is the meaning of this one. This means that on Q0, uh, if the input is 0, it can take these three transitions, either to Q0 itself or to Q1 or to Q2. The three we have mentioned. And the next is uh, on 1, it can move to Q1 uh, or it can move to Q2. That we have marked. And on Two, it will move to Q2. So all transitions for Q0 is completed. And for Q1, there is no transition for 0. Okay. And for 1, it will, uh, uh, it can remain in Q1 itself or it can transit to Q2. Then for this third uh, input symbol 2, it will transit to Q2. And for Q2, there is no transition for 0 and 1. And if the input is 2, it will be here. Okay, and how we find the final state? Final state. If you take the epsilon closures, okay, if you take the epsilon closure, here the Q2 is the final state. Q2 is final state in the given NFA. So you check the epsilon closures and wherever we find the Q2, Okay, here we find Q2. So make this Q0 as final state. Okay, here also we find Q2. So make this Q1 as final state. And Q2 is already final state. So that is also. That means wherever we find the final state on the right hand side, the corresponding state has to be made a final state. So in this particular case, all the states become final state understood 
at is to find out the final state you go to the epsilon closures of the state if the epsilon closure of one state contains final state then make the particular state as final so we have to make q0 as final okay then check the next epsilon closure for q1 so for q1 when we find the epsilon closure it also contains a final state so q1 is also final state and q2 is already a final state so these three are final state in our machine okay so here what we have to do here we will make q0 as final q1 as final q2 as final okay all states we make as final state here this is final this is also final this is initial as well as final okay you understood the conversion So that is epsilon NFA. We have to complete uh, one more topic, uh, the Michael Nirode uh, theorem. Also, I will complete today. In the remaining, we can take uh, in the next class. Okay, so my hill narrowed a theorem. This is for uh, uh, minimizing the DFA. We can minimize the DFA. Minimize means we can reduce the number of states in the given DFA using this theorem. Um, there are basically two uses for this Michael Neroda theorem. One is to check whether the given language is a regular language or not and to minimize the given DFA. The two options are there. Here we are explaining how the mahil naroda theorem can be used for minimization. And the steps for minimizing is, first we have to draw the table of all pairs of states P and Q. Then mark all the pairs where P belongs to F and Q does not belong to F. That means um, if we take any, two, any pairs of two states, one state should be a final state and the other state should not be a final state. That is the condition. Okay. And then uh, if there are any unmarked pair PQ such that uh, if we take a transition from both the states on one particular input uh, and the targeted states are marked, then we can mark P and Q. Okay, we'll see the example. And repeat the step three until no more markings can be made. Combine unmarked pairs and make them a single state in the minimized DFA. Okay. Um, so before this, I will uh, explain you the question pattern. In the question pattern, um, we have a two marks question. I think it will be the most tricky part uh, in the question paper. And it has new, no choice, two marks, um, uh, two marks question, then four marks question, then 11 marks question. And this 11 marks question can be divided like a five plus six marks questions. Okay. So from ZO1, uh, CO1, you will get uh, two 11 marks question and you have to answer either the first or second one. Then from CO2 also we'll have a two 11 mass question and you will have the choice. Okay, first one or second one you have to do. And I think this five plus six will division will be there. 
and uh, you may get this mahil neroda theorem in this part 11 marks question either for 5 marks or for 6 marks you will get i guess and this for this 2 marks and 4 marks question there is no choice okay i think two questions from co1 and uh, two questions from co2 co1 and co2 that is the combination i guess so total four questions 2 into 4, it is 8 marks. 4 into 4, it is 16. 16 plus 8, uh, uh, 24. 24, then, it is correct or not? Okay, so anyway, so this is the pattern for the uh, question paper. So you expect these questions here. My um, it will be uh, in six marks or eight mark question. Okay. So this is the DFA we have. We need to convert this DFA uh, or we have to minimize this DFA. That is the question. So it contains uh, six states, Q0 to Q5, six states it has. And uh, mm, we have to reduce the number of states in the DFA. That is minimization. And the first step is to, we have to draw the table that represents all the pairs, like Q0, Q1, Q0, Q2, Q0, Q3, Q0, Q4, Q0, Q5, one combination, then the combinations of Q1, then the combinations of Q2, like that. So, um, now this is the table I am going to draw. Is visible or not? So, when we make the matrix format, uh, you take either the lower matrix or the upper matrix. The white color is the lower matrix part. This part is lower matrix part. And this is the uh, upper matrix part. Okay. Upper triangular or lower triangular. So this white, uh, white parts are representing all the combinations. This is uh, Q0, Q1. Q0, Q1. And... Uh, um, Uh, this is Q0, Q2, this is Q0, Q3, Q0, Q4, Q0, Q5. Then Q1, Q2, Q1, Q3, Q1, Q4, Q1, Q5, Q2, Q3, Q2, Q4, Q2, Q5, Q3, Q4, Q3, Q5, Q4, Q5. These are the combinations. Okay, all the combinations have been represented in this white part. Now, the next step says that we have to mark all the pairs where one of the state is final and the other one is not final. Okay, that two conditions should be satisfied. So, we take Q0, Q1. Q0, Q1 is the first column. Both are not final states. So, we cannot uh, mark it. Okay. Then Q0, Q2. Q0, Q2. Q0 is non final and um, Q2 is final. So one is final state, the other one is not final state. So we can mark Q0, Q2. Then you check Q0, Q3. Q0, Q3, one is not final uh, and this Q3 is final. So again, it can be marked. Then Q0, Q4. Q0, Q4. One is final, the other one is, uh, sorry, Q0 is not final and Q4 is final. That can also be marked. Then Q0, Q5. In Q0, Q5, both are not final state. So we cannot mark it. Then go for Q1. Combinations of Q1. Q1, Q2. Um, Q1 is not final. Q2 is final. So we can mark it. Then Q1, Q3. Q1 is uh, not final. Q3 is final. So we can mark. Then Q1, Q4. Q1 is not final. Q4 is final. So send, then we can mark it. Q1, Q5. Both are not final. So we cannot mark it. 
okay then we consider uh, q2 q2 um, q2 q3 q2 q3 both are final state we cannot mark and q2 q4 both are final we cannot mark q2 q5 one is uh, this is final this is not final so we marked it q2 q5 then q3 q4 q3 q4 both are final state we cannot mark then q3 q5 one is not final uh, and the other one is final so we can mark then q4 uh, q4 q5 q4 q5 this is not final this is final one is final the other one is not final so we can mark it so the step 2 is completed in step 2 we mark all the pairs where one state is final the other state is not final okay and the step 3 says that uh, we have to find the transitions we we consider all the unmarked pairs consider all unmarked pairs and try to take one transition from all the unmarked pairs for 0 and 1 both 0 and 1 um and if the next state is marked we can mark all these states so we first find out all the unmarked state q0 q1 is not marked q0 q1 is not marked then we find the transitions for zero on this q0 okay um uh, q0 q1 is not marked you find the transitions for zero from both the q0 and q1 so transition on q0 zero q0 zero is q1 and uh, um, q1 zero is q0 from q1 on zero it will take this transition okay it uh, it goes like this so the uh, state uh, pair we get after the transition is q1 q0 and check whether q1 q0 is marked it is not marked so we leave it then you take the transitions for 1 q0 um and for q1 take the transitions for 1 the transitions are q2 q3 q2 q3 q2 q3 is not marked it is unmarked so we cannot do anything this one we cannot do then the next non marked pair is this one q0 q5 then again we have to find the transitions for 0 and 1 for uh, these two q0 and q5 q0 0 is q1 then q5 0 is q5 0 is uh, q5 itself then you check whether this pair q1 q5 is marked q1 q5 is not marked so we cannot do anything we leave it then we find the transitions for one uh, transitions for one is q2 q5 so you can see that q2 q5 is marked here so that means that we can mark this transition uh, this uh, pair q0 q5 can be marked that is the third step says if we find any transition from these two unmarked pairs so when we take a transition on one it will go to uh, a marked pair q2 q5 is marked pair so we can mark q0 q5 okay then uh, we got a new marked pair here then the next unmarked pair is q1 q5 q1 q5 uh, find the transitions for the zero and one q0 q5 so q0 q5 is already marked okay q0 q5 means uh, this one q0 q5 is this one it is already marked that means we can mark this q1 q5 so we mark q1 q5 there okay then uh, next unmarked pair is q2 q3 q2 q3 we find the transitions Uh, it is both the q for it's not making any pair then for one it is not making pair it is same state so we leave it then q2 q4 q2 q4 
the unmarried pair this one it is q to q4 we find the transition again it is not making any pair then the last unmarked pair is q3 q4 uh, it is also not making any pair okay so step 3 is this then we have to repeat the same process again again we check whether uh, this q1 q0 is a marked pair q1 q0 is a marked pair or not q1 q0 uh, is not marked and q2 q3 is uh, marked or not q2 q3 is also not marked so we cannot mark this pair then uh, this pair is marked this pair is marked and these uh, uh, this is not forming any pair this is also not forming any pair because uh, same states are here q5 q4 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 and q5 q5 it's not pair is also not pair okay so now we cannot do any more marking on this so this is the uh, after marking all the pairs uh, still we have some unmarked pairs so the last step four uh, the next step is saying that, uh, that we have to combine all these unmarked pairs so we consider unmarked pair first pair is q0 q1 q0 q1 is one un unmarked pair this one then another unmarked pair is q2 q3 then another is q2 q4 then q3 q4 these are the unmarked pairs okay so these pairs we have to consider and combine them so q0 q1 was the first pair so what we have to do we have to combine those two um, states q0 q1 we combine and make it as a single state in our reduced dfa or minimized dfa then another unmarked pair is q2 q3 you combine q2 q3 then the another unmarked pair is q3 q4 combine q3 q4 then q uh, sorry q2 q4 then another last unmarked pair is q3 q4 you combine those so here we can see that uh, all these three states q2 q3 and q4 all are interconnected so we can make it as a single um, uh, what you call single group okay that means q2 q3 q4 we can make into a single state q0 q1 one state then q5 so only three states will be there in our final uh, dfa so q0 q1 we combined it into one state eh? then q2 q3 q4 into one state and all the three are final state so we put it as a final state q2 q3 q4 combined into one state then the remaining state is q5 okay now we have to draw the transitions so initial state is q0 so we mark it as initial then from q1 q0 q1 if the input is zero they are at uh, the transitions are between q0 and q1 itself okay that means uh, if the input is zero it will remain in the same state itself either in q0 or in q1 so we can put the um, self loop we can put it as a self loop over here okay and if the input is 1 we can see that from q0 if the input is 1 it will take a transition to q2 and from q1 if it is an input uh, is 1 it will take a transition to q3 that means for 1 for input 1 uh, there will be a transition out of these this group out of this group so for for q0 q1 if the input is 1 it will take a transition out of the group to the next group q2 q3 q4 okay so the transition is drawn like that then from uh, the second group q2 q3 q4 you can see that if the input is zero the transitions will be within the group okay from q2 it will go to q q4 from q4 it will be remain in q4 for from q3 uh, it takes to q4 okay so whatever may be the input is zero it will, they will be inside these three groups only so the transition we make it as a self loop okay and see for one whenever there is the input is one from both or from all the three states it will transit from the group and move to q5 so that is why the transition is marked as one here 
and for q5 both the uh, 1 and 0 it will be a self loop okay so this is the minimized dfa where the transitions for 0 and 1 from all the states have been defined so for from the six states dfa we moved to a three state dfa that is um, the minimization of dfa okay hope you understood uh, this much okay do i need to explain once again Happen. Everyone left. Uh, only eight people remaining. Okay, so that is all about the Mahilnirode theorem. So we completed up to Mahilnirode. Um, uh, the remaining parts are uh, regular expressions. From CO1, we have to complete regular expression. The conversions from regular expression to finite automata and then finite automata to regular expression. That by that, uh, we can complete uh, uh, CO1. Then in CO2, we have to see um, the context-free grammar, its derivation, leftmost derivation, rightmost derivation, ambiguity, uh, then uh, the normal simplification of CFG and normal forms that we can see in the next uh, tomorrow's class. Okay. Okay, thank you, students. You can leave now. I will uh, put the... Uh, video recorded video in the in your group